is the Dance Resource Podcast. I am your host, Alexa Lopez. Thank you so much for giving me a lesson. Um, I am filming this on June 15th. It's been around two, three weeks since all the protests have started, and it's it's a moment for us to really educate ourselves and this is exactly why I started this podcast. This is our first episode, this is a pilot episode and we're gonna start from the very beginning. But before we get into that, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting me and I hope that this podcast serves you well. I really want to provide resources for dancers and our other artists if you're listening as well. I want to educate you in all things about um, like dance history and things that need to be reformed in the dance um, in the dance world because this is an era where we are waking up we are realizing things that not everything works anymore you know what was the norm like years ago has to change to accommodate for the new world that we live in um so yeah uh, i i just want to provide a community for us online where we can come together and educate everyone educates everyone everyone can have an opinion you know um so if you want to be a part of this um this community please follow me on the dance research podcast on every social media that i'm in instagram i'm in facebook i'm in uh tiktok and youtube and uh what else like pinterest <laughs> so i'm everywhere um uh, you can be a part of the community you can engage in our posts uh you can reach out to me as well on my um email account which is uh the dance resource podcast at gmail.com if you have any questions, if you want to, if you have any, anything that you need to tell me, if you have any ideas for future podcasts, or if you want to suggest someone to be featured in a podcast, you can be part of this. So, we're going to start from the beginning. We're going to discuss what dance is. Yeah. So, dance is... A funny, a really funny thing. It embodies itself in very different ways. It can be a really intimate experience. It can be a performative experience. It can be an experience where you, where where you do it to meet other people or to have fun with other people. So. Because of this, I, I kind of want you, if you can, to please close your eyes and what is the first image that pops in your head when you think dance? Is it a ballerina on stage? Is it you dancing in your room by yourself like no one is watching? Or is it you with your friends and family at a club or at a party dancing together and having fun? Like what comes to your mind? And you know, everyone has their own definitions. So... I reached out to some of um, my followers on my personal Instagram account and uh, also my Facebook account and I asked them 
what is your definition of dance? And some people responded. And thank you so much for everyone who responded. I believe I have everyone here written down. So I'll give you a shout out. <laughs> um, so we have a mixture of people who are dancers, like trained dancers, and people who are just regular people giving their definition of what dance is. So I'm going to read a few of them here. First one, I'm putting, in, putting them all together because I feel they have a really similar vibe. So usernames of Crista.g, Fit Beauty Nancy, Rainier Martinez, and Cochea, they said that dance is a form of expression, freedom, a stress reliever, expression of the mind, body, and soul. So you see all of these are more of internal type of definition, something that you feel, something that you can express when you are dancing. Um, username of G.VV says that dance is a profession. So something that you can monetize from if you're really good at it. <laughs> and username from Daniel Vargas, this is from Facebook. He says that dance are moves that express how you react to certain rhythms. And I really, really like this definition because no one else gave me a definition this specific. It's more a definition that you can find in a, in a dictionary. And I thought that was interesting coming from someone that is not a trained dancer. So there you have it. There's um, three type of definitions that people gave me. And now I'm going to read off the definition, well, three definitions that I picked out from the merriamwebster.com. This is a dictionary, <laughs> if you don't know. Uh, so actual definitions. Uh, dance is a series of rhythmic and pattern bodily movements usually performed to music. I like this definition. It's um, it can be perceived as some rhythms, and but also I feel like it's a little problematic because it involves the word music in it. And if you are a dancer, you know that you can dance with no music, so that's a little problematic. Um, another definition that I got from there is a social gathering for dancing and the art of dancing. And because of these three definitions, I created three sections in this um, episode involving dance in rituals, social dance, and dance as art. So these are my views of what dance can be. And the first that I want to talk about is dance in rituals. So ritualistic dances come from various, um, various places on earth. And they can be traced back for years and years and years and years. So these dances are still very alive today. Um, they can be found in different communities around the world. And I'm going to break it up into three categories. War dances, nature dances, and religious dances. And there are more and more categories of dances. I will be here forever if I try to explain every single ritual in 
dance ever. Um, so just to give you a glimpse of what these dances embody, I'm going to start by, oh, before I begin, I just want to say these dances are really specific. They have a purpose. So they're not just done just because. <laughs> okay, now we start with the war dances. I'm going to talk about the Hakka dance. The Hakka dance cr uh, comes from the Maori culture in New Zealand. If I pronounce that wrong, please let me know. I'm not great at <laughs> pronunciations, but I try. Um, this dance can be described as stumping, tongue gestures, chanting, and rhythmic body slapping. The dance itself displays uh, pride, strength, and unity. And I got this information from the New Zealand.com website. Um, so this uh, haka dance is really important for tribes when they are going into war to display, um, to intimidate their their enemies or their rivals. And this today is still used. Um, I've seen viral videos of soccer players doing the haka dance ritual before a soccer match to intimidate their um, the opposite team. And also, I saw a group of um, people from New Zealand uh, doing the haka dance during the protests that are popping up everywhere. Um, so this is a really a beautiful type of dance where it, um, it brings the people together and it kind of prepares them for what's next. Um, so next, let's talk about nature dances. And these are dances that are inspired by nature. And I'm going to talk about a Tari Maroc. It's a peacock dance from Indonesia. And it's performed mainly by, by women wearing beautiful, colorful costumes with wings that represent those of the peacocks. So their movement is inspired by the peacocks. Um, they use the, the wings in their costumes to mimic the wing movements of the peacocks. They do head bobs and they have really specific um, head placements that mimic the peacocks. And they do really intricate hand gestures as well, which is um, derived from their um, culture dances. So this dance is considered a welcome dance. It's performed at important events such as weddings or any event that um, that is welcoming. So if tourists are coming, they're probably going to see a Tari Maroc type of dance. And other dances that are nature dances um, can be um, inspired by different things of nature, such as rain, sunshine, other um, other <laughs> animals to pay respects to them. And the last one that I'm going to talk about um, for dancing rituals is religious dances. So this can be anything um, involving any gods or goddesses. It can be for deities to ask them for like a favor. Um, so I'm going to talk about the grass dance. This is widely used by Native American communities, but um, it is thought to originate from the Omaha Ponca and the, the Dakota CX tribes. Um, these, uh, the dancers that dance the grass dance, uh, they flatten the grass by stomping on it to prepare for, um, to prepare the grass for later festivities and rituals. So it's kind of like the beginning 
of other uh, ritualistic events. Um, the its objective is to honor and respect their ancestors and gain spiritual strength from Mother Earth. And this information I got from legendsofamerica.com. So now that we have an idea of what um, rituals involved in dance, let's go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss social dance and dance as art. All right, we are back. We just discussed uh, dance and rituals. We're going to continue by defining social dance. So what is social dance? According to Wikipedia, the most trusted source on earth, <laughs> um, social dances are intended for participation rather than performance and can be led and followed with relative ease. So uh, I broke it up into three categories because I think social dance is more than just um, ballroom dancing. So I broke it up into partner dances, line dances, and club dancing. So partner dances. Um, this is where two people dance in a synchronized manner during a social event. Both partners must already know the basic steps in order to participate in these dances. So this includes things like salsa, cha-cha, waltz, tango, and other ballroom dances. You must already know the basic steps. So it's not really easily um, accessible for everyone because you will need um, some sort of background knowledge in order to participate. Um, so next we have line dances. And line dance is a choreographed dance with a repeated sequence of steps in which a group of people dance in one or more lines or rows, all facing either each other or in the same direction, and executing the steps at the same time. Um, this is uh, done in social events such as parties, weddings, and dance clubs. So I think of these line dances as like the cha-cha slide <laughs> um, and the caballo dorado, if you are Latin X. Um, and we have club dancing. So club dancing participants dance to any kind of music. They can be done as a solo with partners or in groups. Participants can follow their own beat in an improvisational mode. Um, they don't need any technique. They don't need to know any steps um, before they, they dance in a club or a party or any other social event. So it is highly accessible to anyone. Um, you can do two-step you can do something funky of your own you don't need to learn anything you can just do your own thing with your own people or by yourself so now we have defined social dance something that you do with other people in a social gathering like a party and we have dancing rituals which is more about your community and it has a really, really specific purpose. So now we have dance as art. And this is derived from ballroom dancing. Um, and it emerged in the Renaissance era by the King Louis XIV of France. And he is responsible for ballet. So back in... The medieval times, the royalties and people with uh, power in Italy, they had these big um, balls, like ball parties, in which they had to learn how to dance properly because that was considered good manners. 
So they hired dance masters, they were called back in the day, where they would teach the proper ways of dancing for a social event, such as this, this um, balls that they, they threw. So eventually, um, these traditions of Italy made their way through um through France and um years after so like a couple generations after you have King Louis the 14th um and he refined those steps that already were already um like performed by the by the royalties so and and he uh, created an art form which is known as ballet today so he created all the like the ballet positions and he named a lot of the steps that we use today as well and he he created something that was really revolutionary which is the stage so when we see dance as art we see the separation of performers and the audience um so we don't really interact with the audiences that much besides like giving like a look or acknowledging that they're there but we rarely bring the audience into a performance um dance as art is usually choreographed and or predetermined so if it's not choreographed it can be uh, like an improvisation but it's usually really specific improvisation so that the performers know what they're doing and not just doing anything um, as a performance if that makes sense and it's usually done at a theater as i mentioned by King Louis the Fourteenth, um, he created a theater, and that theater provides a separation of the performance, the performers and the audience. Um, usually done in a theater, but it doesn't have to be always in a theater. It can be done in a site specific location, such as a park, a um, a parking lot, a uh, like a beach or any other place that might be interesting to hold a dance performance dance performance <laughs> in um, other requirements as dances art um, it might be the knowledge of technique so dancers that are performers usually take years and years of technique classes and they also hold uh, hours of rehearsals um, in order to prepare for a specific performance. Um, a technique includes but is not limited to ballet, modern dance, contemporary, tap, jazz, hip hop, and other folk dances now. Um, so yeah. So now that we have to find dancers' art as well, we come to a conclusion or a thought. What is dance now? For me, I I feel like dance can be embodied as art. It can be embodied as a social dance. And it can be embody as a ritual and I feel a a dancer that has a passion for dance can hold all of those elements while dancing I feel like a dancer should be performing as an artistic way a ritualistic way and as a social way and I think you can't have one without another because when you perform as an art form you have an audience and that audience can be 
can be in a in a social manner if you think about it that way and if you perform you can be performing as a ritual maybe you are performing as a way of letting your emotions out or as a way of um, relaxing or getting into your own mind I feel like that could be but yeah that's my definition of dance it's really complicated and I don't think there's one definition and I think everyone's definition of dance is going to be different and I am curious what is your definition of dance um, if you participated in my Instagram poll, if you were mentioned here, um, I'm curious how you stand in, uh, after listening to my, uh, this episode, has your opinion changed of what dance is or has it stayed the same? Um, if you didn't participate, but you listened to this episode, I wonder what your stance is in what is dance. And please uh, let me know. I'm really curious. Um, you can reach me at um, the Dance Resource Podcast everywhere on social media. You can send me a DM on Instagram if you want. You can send me a message on Facebook. Or you can send me a good old email by sending it, sending it through the dance resource podcast at gmail.com. So please um, let me know. Engage with me. I'm really curious. You can also be featured in future episodes if you follow me because I'm going to be... Um, posting and asking questions so that's a good way to be featured in future podcast episodes all right so thank you so much um i hope you, that you join me next week we're going to be talking about ballet the good the bad the prejudice and we're going to be featuring our very first guest at, here in the Dance Research Podcast. Thank you so much, everyone. See you next week. This jingle was created by Anthony Reyes. Please find him on Instagram at BigWolf2509 for more information.